Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on air and online right now at Facebook.com slash 1210 WPHT. 855-839-1210. I'm Jeff Harbaugh sitting in until 8 o'clock. Fred, you're on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hello, Fred. Hey, how's it going? Good. So, so my question would be, Oh, it's it, like you're asking why vote for Cory Booker, but why vote for Jeff Bell? The fact that a person is in the United States Senate and acts like an eight-year-old with an imaginary friend, you're okay with that? You think that's okay? You think that's uh, a guy that actually uh, should be voting on how trillions of dollars are spent or whether or not we should go to war? You think that uh, Cory Booker would be good for that? What I don't think would Plus be Plus the good fact that he's a liar, he lies again and again about his financial statements, that he didn't work at this law firm when okay. he did, and then the fact that, oh, yeah, I do speeches because uh, I just love to give money back to charity and he only gave 10% to charity. Okay. Why would you trust the guy? Okay, so my question would be why vote for another Here's Republican. what I said. I didn't say, no, oh, listen. Oh, oh, oh. No, hold on a second. No, because here's what I said about Thad Cochran in Mississippi. I'm a Republican. I, I, if I lived yeah. in Mississippi, I would sit it out. I wouldn't vote. Why would I go vote for somebody like that? I'd be embarrassed to have that guy as a senator. I'd be embarrassed to vote for Jeff Bell, who, who just recently came out saying that single mothers are the reason that they're that uh, single single women are flocking to Democrats for their benefits. I'll, I'll say I'll vote for uh, Big Bird before I vote for a far right religious person. It, it it doesn't even make sense in this day and age. All right. So what has Jeff Bell done that's been a uh, far right religious? Uh, he he a he, a, he commented on uh. Abortion being on, uh, you know. What did he comment about? Oppo- oppo- opposing what did he comment about in, it? In cases of incest, opposing abortion. Uh, the I, I don't even know if he said that or not, but he uh, did. I, he did. I just, I just double checked on that just to make sure. Oh, okay. And then, and how would that uh, a- actually come into effect with lawmaking? What would happen with that? Because when does uh, the Senate uh, vote on abortion at a federal level? When when does that come up? If that's the case, then why... Would what do you mean if that's now? the case? Because why everybody always wants to know their, their opinion. Do you remember the uh, Obamacare uh, debacle with the Supreme Court a couple years ago? Do you remember that? Okay. Do you remember that? You remember yeah. the story when it went... Why was it such what, a big what, deal? What, no, what, when, what, no, no, no. Obamacare, there was, the question was brought up whether or not the Supreme Court was going to overturn Obamacare. So my question to you is why would that be a big deal? If the Democrats and Obama could have just went ahead and overturned it and kept Obamacare, why would that be a big deal? The big deal is because you can't overturn Supreme Court decisions. So this is what I talk about with Democrats all the time. But they they always want to get into global warming, and they always want to get into global warming and they say, oh, it's settled science. I'm calling it settled politics, settled lawmaking. Roe versus Wade was 1973. That's 40 years ago. 40 years ago, they're still running on the same issue. They always do this. So now he's not. He's going to vote for Cory Booker, the man with an imaginary friend, the man that gives his old law firm big contracts, and he keeps receiving money from them because Jeff Bell says he uh, doesn't like abortion. What does it matter? It won't have an effect at all in your life. It's absolutely incredible how much that argument works, that you have idiots being elected to the Senate. Cory Booker's a clown. He's a joke. He's an embarrassment. And this guy, he, he's in New Jersey. He's going to gladly go vote for a joke, an embarrassment to be a senator, a guy that's going to just be a rubber stamp for Democrats, give away ridiculous, out of control, government contract after government contract, big green spending. Nothing will change. The guy has no original ideas at all. So 855-839-1210. I would love to know. Uh, the reason that you're voting for Cory Booker. And there we go. We have one. And it uh, basically, it's a vote against Republicans. Tony, you're on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hello, Tony. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Good. Uh, uh, you know, I know, I understand your focus is on Obama and against Obama all day, every day. I can yeah, understand. I, that. Actually, I haven't even brought anything up about Obama yet. Uh, well, I thought I heard some things about Obama. But my point is this. He doesn't make laws. Where the hell are the House and Senate? They've been in recess with all the stuff going on since after Labor Day. Yeah, they both have. Great. And the reason that they've been in recess is because they're running a campaign. But why? What, what, what do you want to make in laws? When's the last time they actually made a good law? I, I, I know, know that everybody on your house, side, no, the, the whole thing is. The House never does anything. I know, I know, the House never does anything. How many uh, bills? 
Uh, how many bills has the wonderful, your guy, the Democrat, Senator, the majority leader, Harry Reid, how many uh, bills does he have jammed in his desk right now because he won't bring them up for a vote? Well, there are bills that, that won't. No, no. How many bills does he have that he won't know. bring up for a vote? No, no, no. The House doesn't do anything. Answer the yeah, question. Tell me. Tell me, Jeff, I don't know. Uh, a little over 400 right now, bills that have been passed by the House that he won't vote on. going to believe that? What kind of laws are they, Jeff? Google it then. Don't tell me. There's, there's multiple laws. Don't tell me the House isn't passing anything. He won't even bring them up to a vote. And why won't he do that? Because, oh, he plays politics because he doesn't want to bring them up and then the Democrats vote against it. And then oh, you can so say, oh, look, they actually voted the against Obama it. Obama and the Senate. The House is, is has no part in this debacle. Debacle that's going on. It's just the Senate and Obama. I, I didn't say that. I'm not happy with the Republicans at all. But you say, oh, yeah, he can't make laws on his own. Actually, he does make laws no, he on doesn't. his own all the time. He, he makes no, executive he order after executive order. Well, every president makes an executive oh, order. Oh, yeah, not about the They've type of stuff he does. But what what would you like the House to do? What would you like the House to do? Pass something that, that the Senate could agree to. Like what? Like what? Anything. Anything. Just anything. anything just pass anything. What do you mean anything? What? 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 Give it. Well, when, when health care was, was passed, the Republicans refused to implement it in, in many states. Well, so actually, um, passed, there was zero implement. Republican votes because they didn't need any Republican votes for that fine piece of legislation, Obamacare. So yeah, you know then there's no, you're going to try and blame the, uh, the Republicans anything for that. When the Republicans controlled the House and Senate. From 2002 to 2006. So what that, happened? That, that's just an excuse. Look, what do you know? What happened when they controlled the, the house? Have to get together. You keep going in, in the. Uh, let, let's backtrack here. No, let's get back into yeah. Obamacare. Yeah. What's the? What do you want the house to do about Obamacare? What? Well, I would like. I would like some of these states to implement it. There's like 30 states that didn't set up websites, and they all have. Well, they well they didn't need to. They had that governor. federal website set up that works oh, yeah. great. No, that was that fantastic. Was Three years, seven hundred million dollars for a yeah. website that can't work. Yeah. Were they trying to invent something? The no. the, 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 the whole concept of a lower him a little bit. The whole concept of a website. They uh, pretty much mastered that about fifteen years uh, ago. I, I, I know. Let's bring Tony back up. I want to know that. What exactly was so hard about that? That seven hundred million dollars you couldn't uh, create a website. What was the problem with that? Jeff, it was volume. The volume. Oh, it was volume. <laughs> Really? They had 50,000 people a day they, they couldn't handle. They handled about 5,000 people a day. I got to lower them a second. Um, Facebook, by the way, they have like 50 to 60. He just keeps talking. I like that. Facebook has like 50 to 60 million users sometimes at once, and that was uh, volume. They, they, you know, that's the volume they can keep up with. But with uh, the whole 25,000 to 30,000, that was just too much to be able to uh, deal with. 855-839-1210. See, my point here with Tony is he just keeps going on. He repeats talking point after talking point after talking point. First, it was the House problem, and then the Senate couldn't vote on anything. And there's 400 bills sitting in uh, our wonderful, the the majority leader, Harry Reid's desk, as he um, sits in his office, sucks on helium all day, then comes out and speaks. And he acts like there isn't any bills, but there is bills. And I'm not going to tell you that, oh, yeah, they're all great bills by the Republicans. I'm not happy with this uh, Congress. I don't think they really represent me and what I want, nor do I think they really represent you. I don't think the majority of Republicans out there are happy with this Congress. But I'm not going to uh, uh, sit there and act like uh, they're not doing anything and that the Obama and the Democrats are great. This has got to be, top to bottom, the most corrupt uh, group of politicians I-, I could ever possibly imagine. You go top to bottom. And then he just goes there. I, this is what I can't understand. They just go and repeat it. It's the Republicans' faults. It's this. It's that. I'm telling you, everybody wants to sit there and look through. Is it this? The problem with the country? Is it this? Is it that? How come the Republicans can't uh, pass anything? It's simple. Class warfare is what works. The Republicans have been branded as, all the rich party, then this and that. And it works. That's why. And uh, I'm going to get the pop in a second here. My favorite story that I saw, and I'll get to this a little bit more is, and this is another thing I want to get into that Republicans need to hammer, Barack Obama, and this was last week, uh, you, you can't even make this up. He sends a, um, an automated email out, but saying that he wants to raise money for the Democrats and the Republicans, you need to go against them because they're the party of the millionaires and billionaires. Now, at the time the email went out, he was at a fundraiser of not just a billionaire's house in Connecticut, 
The billionaire's name is $32,000 a plate, was Rich Richmond. So he's sending an email out saying that the Republicans are the party of the rich, and he's at a billionaire's house, Richie Rich. Unbelievable. Bob, you're on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hello, Bob. Hi, how are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, all you liberals out there, listen up, okay? This is going to be education to get you out of that low information class. Before this health care was done, it was supposed to, and this is right out of Obama's mouth, insure 30 million uninsured people, okay? Liberals, low-information people, 30 million people. So when it got enacted and people were starting to sign up and the websites were crashing, and at the close of it, when the website closed and sign-up was over, 7.2 million people had enrolled. Where is the 30 million? It should have been 30 million people signed up. Well, not only that, out of the 7.2 million, about a million of them, and it came out afterwards, of course, because they uh, want to pump it up and make it sound like it's more, didn't even pay their initial premium. Then it came out a couple months later, probably about a million are illegal aliens. That doesn't matter, though, because they'll just find a way to be able to put them on. And the CBO, which comes from the government, their report predicts, and they do the projections over 10 years with Obamacare, there will never be the less, even with Obamacare, this fine piece of legislation, there will never be less than 30 million uninsured Americans. So it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. And I got another answer to your question, why Democrats don't criticize other Democrats, because this is what you call blind loyalists. They're like lemmings. They'll follow the leader right off the cliff. They, they treat their, their party like a religion. You'll never convert them. So I, I just... It's hopeless. That's all I can say. No, I do agree with you to a certain point. The hard left that you would say, the people that have been brainwashed, there's no point of trying to educate them. There's no turning it around because it's over. And and they don't understand anything like this. They think Obamacare is great. And you could sit there and tell them over and over again, it doesn't matter. 30 million people are still going to be uninsured, and they'll say, oh, well, the evil Republicans and the Koch brothers, they want to take your insurance away. I have enough sense to educate myself. With the first Bush, I was so mad at him, I had the nerve to vote for vote for a Democrat to get him out of office the second term. I mean, I had the, the, the wherewithal with inside of me to not be a blind loyalist. And yeah, and I voted for a Democrat because the first Bush really pissed me off. And another thing, too, at your point, Bob, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but as far as them being uneducated, it's because they don't read anything. And I talked about Panetta trying to hawk a book. Liberals, and if you look at this last few years, even their gems, their stars, they don't sell any books. Hillary Clinton, she sold 60,000 copies the first week. The publisher printed a million. I have no idea what they're going to do with them. Michael Moore did a speech I was talking about at Barnes & Noble. He's on a book tour. 400 people showed up. He sold two copies. That's how they they stay so stupid. They don't read anything. They're not informed. That's true. And what's really going to be said, you're going to have Democrats and liberals call in now because of my call, because it's going to make them burning inside. But they just cannot accept facts. I mean, you could tell them two and two is four and put apples in front of them, and they still won't believe you. I, I just, they're, they're just, I don't know, uneducatable, I guess. I don't know. I hear you. All right, Bob, thanks for the phone call. 855-839-1210, at t Verizon Wireless, push pound 1210. And... Bob is right with the hardcore left. Uh, I'm going to say your slight Democrats that don't like Republicans. I finally, I found a way. I'm going to get to this uh, after the top of the hour. I found a way to be able to break into them a little bit. And the people that are not the crazy left, not the Occupy Wall Streeters, they're done. Forget about that. But I found a way that I can tap into the people that are the casual ones and make them at least say that the Democrats aren't that great. WPHT, WPHT. W-O-G-L HD3 Philadelphia. We're live and local. We're Talk Radio 1210 W.